Right, hello, welcome back to another little tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the dot product, um, what it does uh, mathematically, how we can use it, um, and we're we'll looking at some materials and blueprints. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So if we, uh, if you've heard of the dot product and you wanted to look up what it was, um, something like the the Wikipedia definition, it's pretty heavy stuff, isn't it? It's pretty kind of like um, difficult to pass what's going on in Euclidean geometry, Cartesian comments, all this kind of stuff. Um, let's simplify that down. So basically, what a dot product is, um, it's well, so it's the projection of one one vector uh, onto another. Um, what does that mean? Well, basically, if the two directions are pointing the same way, we get a value of 1. If I go here to my little test scene, I've got two direction arrows, and all I'm doing, I'm taking that, uh, the direction and I'm checking how close they are to, um, to facing each other. So here, these two arrows now are exactly the same direction. Um, I'm doing the dot product between them and I get this value here of 1. And as I rotate this round, you can see that's getting less. Um, here, the two arrows are perpendicular. The directions are completely different, um, and we get a value of zero. So, um, yeah, that's what the dot product. So that's the output of the dot product. Um, if you're into maths, obviously look it up, check it all out. That's great, but we just want to use it. Um, so that's what the dot product does. It compares two angles. So if they're the same direction, value of one. If they're perpendicular, value of zero. And if they're opposites, value of minus one. So this arrow is obviously facing completely direction, uh, completely opposite direction to that one. Um, cool, that's our dot product, right. Um, just get rid of these, and then we'll see another example uh, in a material. Yeah, that's fine. Go away, go away, go away. So if we go to our materials, be in here. I have an example. So, looking at that in kind of uh, material terms. So, I have here a direction. This vector here, zero, zero, 001. Unreal displays it as blue because that it's treating those values as colors. Um, but actually, it's a direction vector. It's defining a direction for us. If we look at the, um, the gizmo here. The Z is in blue. That means it's up, isn't it? Upwards. Zero, zero, 001 defines a direction that is moving upwards in space. Um, so this, although it's colour and represented as a blue, actually we're using it as a direction. Uh, and if we dot product our few vectors, in this case, let's just delete all this for now. If I say a direction here, if this is also blue, and we dot product that, we get an output of white, uh, or 1. And we can check that using the debug scalar values here. One. There's a little bit of a rounding error. We'll ignore that. That's just Unreal doing optimizations or doing the maths quickly. And yeah, rounding error. Won't worry about that. Um, so those two directions are the same, aren't they? That direction zero zero one, same as the arrows we had a minute ago. Um, this direction zero zero one as well. That's the same. If I change that to let's say one zero zero, this is the red axis. This is now moving uh, along in x. Um, the x axis and the z axis are completely different directions. Um, so we're getting a value of 0. And if I did 0 minus 1, we're getting a negative 1 here as well, aren't we? Because that's the opposite direction. So this is painting one way, in the RK straight up. This is now pointing straight down, negative in here. Um, if we try and preview that, we'll get black. Well, that's the same as if we previewed this one, isn't it? Um, Unreal, in the material editor, can't display negative numbers. So when we're doing this, uh, if I go back to being minus blue, this is showing us as black uh, in here, but if we look at the debug, actually we find it's it's minus one. And if we were to take the absolute value of this, uh, this is another mathematical term, just ignores the um, ignores the the sign. Um, we're going to give get that value um, of of one because that's minus one. Ignoring the sign is just one. So. Actually, the value here, if I go back to my square, uh, is minus 1. So, when we're dealing with this, we want to use two normalized vectors. Um, so, if I change my direction here to be minus 2, and then if we dot that, you see we're getting minus 2 here. So, from our, our, our output, um, we want the two directions that we're checking 
when we're doing this using it to, to check directions um, they need to be the same length so we want the uh, the arrows to be the same um, if I go back and let's undo and delete and delete my arrows that's gonna take a while there we go if we for example were checking two angles we wouldn't want to compare those two because then we wouldn't be comparing just the directions we'd also be comparing how long that vector was so there is a mathematical term for this there they are they've magically reappeared um, normalize uh, so if we take this and we check that here that's the wrong one I need to be checking a vector I'm going to preview my my vector values if I take a value of uh, of 1 0 0 I know that length is 1 because I've put it to be 1 um, this vector currently 1 1 0 0.2 well if I do it again debug float for that 1 1 0 0.2 great if I normalize it I actually get 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.14. So it's it's scaling all those values back so that the total length of that direction is one, um, and that's what normalize is doing. And we can just compare. If I did the dot product of an unnormalized direction versus the normalized direction, it's going to give you a different value. So when you're dealing with your dot products, um, you want to make sure that all the values are normalized before they are. Um, put into uh, the the function before that before that happens so um, so that's what it does uh, in this sort of simplistic case um, obviously like I say if you want to go and learn all the maths behind it great go and do that um, but in our case we just want to use it so we know it's comparing two vectors so that's that's what we're going to do with this so if I then well what can we do with this well we can compare it to things like the vertex normal so if we look at this sphere, I'm taking the upwards direction in the world, 0, 0, 1, that's SA, Z, so anything that's facing upwards, and I'm comparing it with the dot to the vertex normal of my sphere. And you can see anything that's facing upwards gets white, uh, anything that's going uh, either horizontally or perpendicular to upwards, um, or anything below. Again, this is actually negative numbers. If I took my absolute value here, plug that in, you can see that there's actually these values are facing upwards, these values are facing down, opposite to this. So the direction, um, so these ones are a negative. If we abs it, we ignore that negative, we get that color back. Um, this is really, really powerful, um, especially for things like environment shaders. You might want to put snow on top of rocks, moss, that kind of thing. Um, we don't want to just like bake it into the rock so that when we rotate it, it doesn't work. You can see no matter how I rotate this object, the top part of it is going to stay white. It's going to stay with that um, that color, that white value coming from my shader. Um, really cool. Don't want to open you. Oh, in the right place. Here we are. Um, and we don't have to compare it to up. You could make a horizontal shader if you wanted. Here I'm comparing against red. Everything that's facing this way. Um, if you're making a 2D side scroll or something like that, you might have things that face forwards versus things that face off. You could rotate those objects and the facing forwards is still going to be there. So, um, one nice little use case of uh, a dot product comparing those two vectors. Um, we can also compare against the pixel normal. So, in the previous example, we were doing a dot product of the vertex normal. Well, that sphere, you can see there's a normal map here. So, I've plugged a normal map in which is giving me this shading but it's not being taken into account of in the um, in the dot product calculation well if we use the pixel normal the pixel normal is already taken into account the the uh, the normal map and so we're getting kind of like a nice bit here you could definitely see this being kind of like a snow shader taking into account the kind of the crevices in the rocks from the normal map so um, pretty cool pretty nice thing we can do. Um, where you might have already been using the dot product and not even realized it um, is with a Fresnel. Fresnel fall off. So what's happening here? Well the camera camera vector, this is another uh, input data node so it's it's getting data from the engine not just things we've put into the material. Um, camera direct vector is the direction the camera's facing. So here we are, we're comparing it against the pixel normal and I've just powered it up to give it a bit more contrast. So you can see here, these faces here are facing us. 
these faces around the edge are facing offwards because I'm using pixel normal if I put that in I get um, the normal map uh, having an effect on this again um, which is pretty cool uh, yeah really nice so like I say this is this sort of fall off um, is what's called a Fresnel fall off uh, named after a mathematician who invented it uh, and here's the node it exists uh, in Unreal. So there's two. So we'll have a look at the first one. This is the Fresnel. This is just the sort of um, black box one. So I really don't like this node, I'll be honest. Um, we're getting that same functionality. So we're seeing how the the numbers here are facing up upwards or facing away from the way the camera is facing. And we're getting white. And here we're getting... Um, well, we're not getting black because unfortunately this number, this this node has uh, some baked in numbers here, base reflection fraction, so 0 0.04, for some reason the default is 0 0.04 so you're never getting completely black um, I think this is more built for kind of creating rim light shaders around the back of characters, so they never want to go to completely black, well in VFX I quite often want to go to black um, and again it's got this thing here, I had my power and I was creating contrast, well this has got a baked in number um, inside there, so personally I don't really like this node I prefer to use the function node. This does very much the same thing. Um, by default, it's inverted. So black at the middle, white at the outside. Well, there's an option for that. Invert, yes or no. We invert it. Um, see a little bit of what's happening here. The contrast is a bit low, so we'll put the power in, increase the contrast. Um, and by default, the normal vector it's using is the vertex normal. So we're not seeing a normal map. Uh, having an effect, but if we want that, we can plug it in, plug in the pixel normal to overwrite that. So this is what I would use, and because it's a function, I can open it up and have a look inside. Um, lots of things going on, but the important bit is here: is this dot product. So it's that's what it's doing, comparing those vectors. Um, really nice, really powerful. Um, you can create a lot of cool shader effects by using the dot product, comparing things. Um, so great, right, uh, that's all material stuff. Um, we can also use this uh, in a blueprint. So I worked with an engine once that had a thing called a look-at trigger. Um, it's a really nice feature. Um, basically it would tell the engine, was the player looking at this object? Well, it's not a thing we have by default in Unreal, uh, at least as far as I know. So we'll have to make one on, make our own. So um, here we are, BP look-at trigger. So um, let's... So we make this from scratch. So I've created a variable. Um, it's a static mesh actor reference. Static mesh actor reference, object reference, um, and it's instance editable. What does that mean? Well, if I take my look at trigger in world, I have an app, uh, an option here, specify which object, uh, which actor I'm going to be looking at. Where in my case, I'm using this sphere here. So now I've got a um, a reference to that object. Uh, in my blueprint, um, we can take the forward vector. Uh, well, so what we want to do now, we want to compare. Are we looking? We want to work out: Are we looking at this actor? So, if we take the the direct or the the position, get the right thing, uh, get location. So this is where the the object is in the world, and we also know uh, in Unreal we have a thing called the camera manager. Get player camera manager. So this is the uh, the hard coded, the the part of the engine that's doing all the the camera management. Um, we can get the location of that. Get camera location. Um, so I've got two points now, points in space, where the object is and where my camera is. And if I want to get the direction between two points, uh, you take one away from the other. This now is giving me a vector that is that direction. Now, unfortunately, or um, yeah, in this case, because we've taken sort of uh, those positions away from each other, we've got the direction correct, but actually the length of that vector is really big. If you're a long way away from the object, that's going to give you the, a vector that's the same length as the distance between them. So we now need to normalize it. And that means now we've got a direction that's a length of one, and we can use that to do a dot, dot product with. Um, so the other thing that we can do with our camera, manga, man, bleh, camera manager is get the forward vector. Uh, I think it's that one. Um, so when we get a vector, it's going to give us a normalized vector already. Um, there you are, I can see it says length 1.0, so it's telling you that this is already normalized. 
Um, and now we can just do a dot product between the two. Um, I'm just going to print this out at this point. Give us a quick debug of what this is doing. I'm doing this on tick. Now, that's possibly a bit expensive, um, but hopefully for, de for demo purposes, it should give us what we want. So, um, yeah. So now, if you look at those numbers as they're coming in, if I'm looking at the sphere, we're getting 0.99. It's not quite going to 1, rounding errors and not being exactly on the, on the things, probably causing that, but it's close enough. So we're getting numbers that are very high. If I move my camera so it's off screen, we're getting numbers near 0. If I start facing the other way, we're getting those negatives. So we're getting the correct result for my dot product. Um, we just now have to bring in some, some logic for it. So um, here... Let's just say rather than or after doing our print spring sprint print string, we'll do a branch and we'll just compare our dot product to let's not do that. Yeah, it's greater than. Greater than equal to let's say 0.75. So as it gets if we're not looking directly at it, it's fine. As soon as we look directly at it, uh, I'm just gonna hide it. And that's the logic for this. So then I can do set hidden. In game, so actor hidden again, hidden true. So now, following our logic through, we're getting the location of the sphere. We're turning, we're comparing that with the location of the camera to get the direction between the two. Uh, we're normalizing, normalizing it so we can compare that to the forward vector. So we're saying, is the camera facing this way, and the objects pointing, or the distant, the the vector between them is this one. Um, and as they get close enough, it gets hidden. So. Let's compile this and hopefully if I've done this right, if I play, yeah, point one, so we're not pointing at the object as it gets closer and closer. Oh, there it was. Suddenly it was uh it was hidden, it was being looked at. Um it's a little crude. Uh it's more to do with the direction of the object. So uh you can kind of get it off screen. We're further out, this should be much better. Oh, I have to move further out. So maybe you need to be a bit of a higher value in that. Uh, let's say 0.95 or something like that. There we are. So it's there, and as you look at it, it disappears. So um, pretty crude, but we could use that to do all sorts of things. So um, I was working with some people on a horror game recently, and we wanted to trigger things happening off screen. Well, how do you do that? Well, you check if it's being looked at, and if it's not being looked at, you know it's off screen. We can trigger it doing something. Um, some crazy writing on the walls and all that kind of cool stuff. So, um, hopefully that is helpful. Uh, it's a really powerful tool to be able to compare two things, uh, or two directions, um, both in materials, to do things like uh, up vector, sort of, sort of snow on top of things, um, or rim light shaders, um, fall off with Fresnel, that kind of stuff. Uh, or yeah, get it into your gameplay logic or even your kind of like visual effects logic around the world. Um, cool, as always, questions, comments, etc. Uh, at the address below. Um, and I'll see you all next time.